Welcome to another episode of the Engineering Influence Podcast, ACEC's regular series of podcasts. We're here today with the three presenters of the Close of Business podcast, which they build as the one and only podcast for young STEM professionals. All three are engineers at Black & Veatch. So uh, why don't we start off by the each of you introducing yourself and telling us a little about yourself. All right, right on. I'll go ahead. My name is Kevin Flaker, and uh, first, thank you for having us on and letting us join your podcast. Um, we all three are engineers at Black & Veatch. I am an electrical engineer. Uh, I work in the solar design business. I design solar fields for a living, and podcasting is, I guess, as you would say, a side hustle for me. My name's Becca Schmidt. I'm also um, an engineer, mechanical engineer, who's been focused on designing uh, natural gas-fired power plants and just transitioned over to, uh, to doing business development and sales, more client-facing work. And then I'm the third co-host. Uh, name is Ryan Carlin. Instead of those two, I am a civil engineer, so you got all of it covered. <laughs> um, I have been focused in the power delivery group, uh, transmission line, and substation work. So uh, kind of diverse engineers within the um, power business, but um, all have love for podcasts. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. I've listened to a few of them, and that's, they're, they're really well done. It sounds like you guys have a lot of fun doing it. I'm, uh, it you When you first started, you were saying that, you know, this is – this is from people who have never looked up on Google how to do a podcast. How did you, how did you guys decide to, to, <laughs> to do a podcast? Yeah, so a couple years ago, uh, a few of us were pulled into somewhat of a roundtable here at Black & Veatch, and the purpose of the discussion was to look for ways for Black & Veatch to engage more in the community. Um, we're a severely industrial, or in the past, we're heavy in the uh, industrial um, power, water, telecom businesses, and not necessarily more on the commercial side. So we were just kind of throwing around ideas for ways for us to connect into the community. And I happened to um, just start getting into podcasts and listening to podcasts and love how much you can learn. So I threw this idea out there that, you know, we could create this podcast. Um, it would be a way for us to engage the community on the different projects we're doing um, the work we're doing at Black & Veatch, but then also selfishly, it was going to be, if it went through, a cool way for me to, being a recent graduate, look up all these different cool industry technologies that were emerging, as well as all the different things Black & Veatch was doing, and being able to like research that for myself, as well as share that on the podcast format with the community. And what that's transformed into in today is not so much of a, here's what we do at Black & Veatch, but more of a, here's a, a generic STEM podcast where we talk about technology across, we try to mm -hmm. reach all industries, not just power or water, or telecom. Uh, you know, we talk about autonomous vehicles and Hyperloop, just any really cool thing going on in the STEM industry and just bring that to the community. Um, and I guess utilize Black and Veatch's knowledge when, uh, when applicable. Yeah. In addition to that, we talked a lot about engaging with, the millennial workforce, the millennial group, we felt like um, there's this external perception of what engineers and people working in the STEM industry are really like. And the three of us kind of like to categorize ourselves as something that's kind of against the grain, not the typical stereotypical nerdy, nerdy engineer, you know, yeah. and we wanted to present, you know, what it can be like to be an engineer, that it's this really cool and exciting thing. And it doesn't have to be overcomplicated or super nerdy it can be talking about just cool things going on in the stem industry literally over beers and communicating it in a really digestible relatable way too and that's kind of just to give a hindsight how we got the name close of business so it was all meant around you know having at the close of business you know when everyone goes home or goes to a happy hour kind of just talking recent news or stem related stuff in a fun and kind of informal manner um, so we try to kind of play on that and have a informative yet fun kind of atmosphere. Yeah, kind of a long-winded response, but yeah. that's the that's the entirety of it for yep. you. We put it all on the table. <laughs> well, it really comes across, and 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 especially in your early ones when uh, when you were sort of finding your feet. Um, what I mean, all all three of you are are really quite young. I mean, I if I'm right, I mean you all graduated since like 2015 or 2014. Is is um. Right. Is yeah. it, it what 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 does that bring? Do you think to your uh, to your your program? I mean, you know, 
the the, the picture of the old stodgy engineer with the tie, and, <laughs> and uh, you guys are not that obviously. But the, it, what impact does your age do you think have on this? I think uh, I mean. One is just a different perspective. You know, we don't know what we don't know type of thing. So we're not afraid to ask questions uh, kind of along the same lines of our audience. Uh, we're learning just as much when we're preparing yeah. for these episodes as uh, our listeners. Um, so, I mean, I think I think that's one big thing um, that I see. Yeah, and I guess one of the focuses or one of the, one of the purposes for this podcast would be to kind of grow and influence STEM in younger uh generations, whether that be college students who are studying in the field and are or maybe flirting with the idea of getting into STEM industry but don't really know, like, you know, that's a huge entry point when you start talking science and tech. It's kind of scary and daunting at first, um, or even high schoolers who are interested. So I think, like, we're able to bridge the gap um, to where we can communicate with the experts in the industry. Um, we have the connections, but at the same time, we're still learning ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we're able to, as Ryan mentioned, ask the questions that the everyday listener would, would be asking. You know, we're not experts. We hardly know what we're talking about. And I think that's kind of our trick. Yeah, for sure. And I think a lot of the perception that, of, that I've had with the people that I work with here is that, you know, they're experts now, but what were they like when they were developing as young adults, young people in their career? And I think we're all kind of like finding ourselves when we're learning throughout our our careers and also learning what it's like to be a young adult in er, early on in your career and developing through all of that. Yeah. It's something that people don't really talk about as much. And in reality, when we all started working full time, we didn't know what we were doing. Okay. And that's totally fine to communicate. Still, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still trying to communicate that, you know. Um, and that's something that we are really passionate about engaging with our listeners on as well. Yeah, no, I, I you can hear the passion, obviously, and, and the enthusiasm. I mean, what have you have you learned about your listeners at all? Do you know who they are? Um, you know, are they are they the young people who are thinking about getting into STEM, or are they other engineers? I'd say it's kind of a wide range. So um, we've gone to college career fairs and. Uh, some people have listened to the podcast, and, you know, they, they love it, and they say they get good stuff out of it. But then also, you know, we do um, episodes kind of internally um, in the release, and we have executives come up to us, uh, whether within Black & Veatch or external companies, and they kind of share their uh, interest and kind of excitement about the podcast. So, I mean, I think just we're geared towards young professionals, but I don't think that really uh, – leaves us out of, you know, Clint Robinson, who's on your guys' board. He's a big fan as well, and I want to call him a young professional. Sorry, Clint. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so kind of all ages, I guess, in that sense. Yeah, how do you guys, uh, how do you come up with your your topics? The, the, I mean, you've done 33 so far. That's a lot of uh, things to think of and, uh, and and bring and research and bring to the bring to the air. Yeah, it's a combination of tapping into all of the different things that are, all the different innovative things that are happening within Black & Veatch. Um, a lot of the people that we've interviewed so far are um, professionals that are doing really awesome, big, innovative things within the company, and we're excited about it, and we want to communicate that with, within the world. With, we want to communicate that out into the communicate, uh, community. And then um, also just things we're interested in, too. Yeah. A lot of times it's us just we're on the internet, we're curious, we're reading about what's going on in the um, STEM industry, and we'll talk about it amongst ourselves, and we're like, this is a really cool thing to do a podcast episode about. And one, one cool thing that's happening is as we grow um, within Black & Veatch, we have more and more people reaching out to us with topic ideas or inviting us to go to um, – conferences where, you know, we just came back from San Francisco at a Singularity University Summit where there are topics talking about, you know, Bitcoin and digital currency, AI, AI space, like all these really cool topics. And, you know, we're getting invited to go there. So we find our topics via presenters at these conferences or, you know, clients of Black & Veatch, you know, Black & Veatch has worked with Tesla or was it um, Volkswagen with the Electrify America? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we'll, our clients are also the ones who are out there innovating in this uh, industry. So we're, we're being put in contact with a bunch of different people as well. And that's a good, I mean, I saw that you guys were at PowerGen 
Um, I mean, you guys yeah. do get around it. I mean, is it the, is it the podcast taking you there or are you going there and then using that for the podcast? I think it's 100% the podcast yeah. taking us there. Okay. Yeah. We've definitely got a lot of support from within black and beach. Uh, I mean, they really like the idea uh, of the podcast and kind of what we bring to the table. And so black and beach has really been supportive about, you know, giving us a budget um, and that budget allows us to do things like, you know, buy new fancy equipment or go to these conferences or it may have you. So I, I really say it's the podcast that's really funded mm -hmm. a lot of this. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that, uh, you know, it doesn't feel like a black and beach podcast it, at all. It feel, I mean, I guess when you mention it, yeah, you do talk to a lot of black and beach people, but it doesn't feel like you're doing this um, to promote the company at yeah. all, which is great. Yeah. And that's, that's a very important point. We don't, we don't want to be a podcast that shoves black and beach down the listener's throat because that will just be a turnoff in all honesty. It's an obvious marketing scheme and that's not what we are here. Um, we're, we're basically utilizing our contacts because we work with these people. They know us, they reach out to us the most, but as we see, um, I'm willing to bet if we were to look back, like the first half are mainly black and beach centric, but as we started to expand and grow our network, we are focusing on, um, I don't want to, you want to call it external initiatives and stuff like that. So um, we definitely want to utilize Black and Beach when we can, but we also don't want to, you know, make it all about Black and Beach. Yeah, what, uh, looking back over all the the episodes, what, what are some of your favorite episodes that people might want to listen to? Ooh. That's a, oh. a lot of really good. A lot of really Favorite good episode. ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think one of my personal favorites was when um, we had the opportunity to interview Eric Anderson, who is the executive chairman for Top Golf and CEO for West River Group. Um, that was a great opportunity because that's pr one, because it was one of the most high profile people that we've been able to sit down and talk to, but also a lot of the business and leadership and entrepreneurship insights that he gave us were com completely invaluable. And then also the additional content that we have on that episode, we focus on technology and sports and the three of us are really fun. big sports fans. And so it was kind of like a wonderful merging of worlds and um, just us being able to really truly show our personality and show our interest on that episode. That's definitely one of my favorite ones. Kevin's having a hard time deciding. <laughs> I'll, I'll probably say uh, mine. I got a couple. I'll, I'll give you two, mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, one of my favorites, um, I guess I would say, would be um, the Hyperloop, one of the Hyperloop discussions we had. And this was kind of more early on at around episode 10 or so. I guess seven. Uh, yeah, but it was, I mean, Hyperloop's kind of continued to get a lot of the limelight and just selfishly, you know, I learned a lot <laughs> from doing that episode about what Hyperloop is. Uh, so, I mean, I think that's something that kind of still applies today, uh, even though that was maybe, what, a year ago. Yeah, wow. Um, and then the other one probably I would say is uh, he's a little bit of a wild card, uh, but Tom Friend, we interviewed him at uh, oh, Power yeah. Gym. He, uh, just give a quick background, he's like, was what he was in the Air Force, and then now he he was consultant for Duke Energy. He's a scrum or like agility consultant. Uh, he's kind of all over the place, um, but super fascinating and intriguing guy. And uh, that was probably one of my favorites. Talk about somebody who's passionate about learning. Yeah, Tom Friend was the most passionate about learning. Yeah, he was he was a fun interview. I think. You know, I just I just want to say all of the guests we've had and all the topics we've covered are great. Yeah, Let me just yeah. put that out there. But, <laughs> um, my, my favorite is probably the Prakapa Sankar interview that we just completed at Singularity University, mainly because this is a woman dominating the STEM industry at such a young age. Um, she's on her second company right now in data and data and AI are for, like... For good. Yeah, and that's like the future and that's where you know, the, probably going to be the dominating technology coming in the next 10, 15 years. And she's already at the helm of it. And I'm more excited to have interviewed her than maybe about the topic, just because like, I'm excited to see what she can do in yeah, the future. See her grow and she's going to make a big impact on the planet. She, yeah. she already is, but she's going to make really big impacts. So, yeah. And, and 
I guess from your from your visit out to Singularity, are, are, do you have other other podcasts planned? Maybe something on blockchain or something? Yeah, we our our, our blockchain episode fell through. Um, we did get a little bit into it with Tom Friend, I will say, but he he was so passionate and so like educated on it uh, mm-hmm. that you know we try to slow him down and it was hard to it but yeah that's definitely something we need to do is like a blockchain 101 episode because it is kind of like a really vague idea that's kind of hard to to explain and process and um we have a hard time understanding it sometimes so definitely that would be something we want to help our viewers under or listeners understand as well so Trust me, that's that's yeah. on the list of ideas. <laughs> we we do have an episode, one more episode from Singularity coming up with the CEO of Upwork, mm-hmm. um, Stefan Casriel. Stefan Casriel. Casriel, yeah, he's he was a Silicon Valley guy back in the PayPal and all that those days. So really cool guy. I got to sit down and talk with him about the future of work. Yeah, really, more than anything else. Yeah, so Upwork is a what do you freelance call? platform um, online. It's like one of the largest. One in the of world. the largest um, in the world, and he has really great insights about what the future of the workforce is going to be like, and how we need to adapt, and how Upwork is helping um, the workforce adapt as well. Yeah. So. Well, you guys really get into a lot. I th- you also had didn't you have one on space recently? <laughs> we just released one on a, yeah. a little bit of a space topic. One we, of the more random. Topics. Yeah. <laughs> we interviewed the uh, chief scientist, the chief scientist, the chief scientist. The scientist as he says, yeah. Bruce Betts from the Planetary Society. Um, for those who aren't familiar with the Planetary Society, it's a um, non a nonprofit, crowdfunded space exploration and research company uh, headed by. The boy Bill Nye. Bill Nye, the science oh, guy himself. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's his his company. Um, and Bruce Betts was one of the people who led on the Light Sail 2 mission. Um, I can go into all sorts of details about that, but you can listen, listen to our episode and uh, you might learn a little bit more about what that technology yeah, is. Yeah, if you want to hear an interview that had absolutely no outline or plan, listen to that because we literally grabbed him from off stage and interviewed him with no questions or anything, just kind of let the conversation go. And I think it was pretty funny and random because of that and still super educational as well yeah we hope <laughs> <laughs> well for for uh if any of our members were listening and were thinking maybe they wanted to start a podcast what what would your what would your advice be for them to to as a you know as a member of a member firm to to get a successful podcast going yeah and i i think this answer may apply to more than just a podcast just really anything that you think is kind of entrepreneurial uh, within your company or just in general is I think just taking the bull by the horns and kind of holding yourself accountable. Uh, You know, Kevin kind of was the ringleader of this, but just him making the statement that he thought it would be a good idea kind of puts the wheels in motion. And um, without that kind of first step, uh, you're never going to actually achieve anything. Um, (laughs) So, you know, we, Kevin, myself, Becca, we didn't know, how podcast record, we didn't know the whole post-production, all that stuff. That was all new to us when we started out. Um, but it's just something you kind of learn as you go. You know, it took us a while to release our first couple episodes and kind of master what we were doing. Uh, we've been doing it, what, for two years now. and Still we're, not mastered. We're still not mastered. So it's, it's, every episode. Yeah, <laughs> just like any new skill or hobby, you know, it takes takes time and takes initiative and action and kind of holding yourself accountable. Um, I guess from, from within inside a company – if, if we want to look at that mind frame, if you have an idea, I think in any successful company, you're going to have leaders that support most ideas. Um, and I think, yeah, like Ryan said, the biggest thing is speaking out, expressing your idea, and then following through with it, as Ryan said. But I think like the biggest thing was I, I spoke out in a meeting, and there are leaders in that meeting that were willing to be like, you know what, let's run with this. We'll give you five hours a week. Let's see what you can do. And since then – Iteration after iteration, we've grown to have, you know, a larger budget. But also make sure that whatever it is you're doing is something that you love. And I know that sounds kind of cliche, but one thing that we found is we're full-time engineers. So we work 40-plus hours a week doing engineering work or back up with business development. And this is something we have to do on the side. And it's really hard to put in the extra hours 
um, when it's not something you enjoy. So you have to make sure you enjoy it first if you're really going to be successful in it. Yeah. Um, I think just jumping off of things that they both said, we're really fortunate that they're is leadership within Black and Veatch that supports innovation. They see the value in what we're doing here, and we feel really fortunate that there are leaders here that were willing to take a chance on us and um, help us progress through this whole project and see where it could go. So we're really thankful for that. And then in addition, yeah, the passion is super important. And then also just finding a voice that's different than what is out there now. We think that we had a, and we still do believe that we have a different perspective than anybody else out there on the podcast platform. And we have a voice and we have things to say, and we're hoping that we're teaching people and they're learning and also just give, giving people a better perspective on what our industry is about and the kind of impacts we're wanting to make as well. Yeah. And one last thing I would just add to that is, one thing I've noticed talking to a lot of these interviewees is most companies are passionate about uh, kind of motivating and giving ownership to young employees. Uh, most companies have a STEM related kind of program. And so I think, uh, you know, don't be afraid to kind of speak out and speak your idea like we've kind of been saying so far. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, from, you know, being in the industry, writing about the industry for the last 12 years, I mean, one of the big issues is how do you motivate your, your younger employees? You know, the, the baby boomers don't understand the millennials sort of thing. Um, and, and, <laughs> and, and this seems to be a, 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 an example of, of, of a way of doing it. 100%. Yeah. I think in general, us in the millennial generation are really motivated by kind of like a greater calling. I don't come to work every day because I'm, I know I'm going to be sitting and responding to emails or doing calculations. It's because... I know that I'm coming to work and I'm contributing to a better society, a better community, a better infrastructure so that we as a community can live a healthier, more yeah. comfortable life. And I think that this is just another outlet for us to discuss that and try and get that out into the world a little bit more. Well, great. Well, that, 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 I think you guys have covered the, the, the gamut here. So um, I really appreciate you coming on. And I, I urge our, uh, our listeners to, to tune into the uh, Close of Business podcast. You guys are on uh, Spotify, right? Yeah, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, any, any really podcast form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the best way is just to look up whatever you listen to on podcast, Close of Business, and you'll find us. And uh, hopefully you enjoy the episodes. And if you got uh, questions or comments, uh, reply to us, yeah. but um, otherwise you can email us too at cbpodcast at gmail.com yeah. also. Great. Thanks so much for your well, time. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm.